the king of games, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You Girl, slow down. slow down. Let me tell you how it's finna go down. Just chill as a merry go round. If you didn't know, then where well, you finna know now? Cause we about to enter my town. And hood niggas gonna be feeling your style. As soon as any of them with the show smile, they'll tell they friends, then bring the whole crowd. So you better hide yourself. Cause these niggas till they get beside yourself. And if you ever somewhere by yourself, you can play this in the cars to remind yourself that you might have pirated. Yeah. So they ain't gonna bang on you. And we riding dirty. You ain't got a stain on you Woo. You good You good Don't worry about it that's that new song by Buddy. That's called You Good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed, also known as King Flex. Ready to spit that hot fire, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, y'all, don't forget, man, I'm going to be down in Nashville, Tennessee in a couple of weeks. That's September 21st. Get your tickets at TariqLive.com. We're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. The game is going to be hot. The fire is going to be burning. Don't forget to check out TariqElite.com. That's where you can get all the fly clothes and gear, the hats, shirts, the Tariq Elite wear, the sunglasses, the cologne. That is TariqElite.com, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get into some real good game today. Today's topic is seven women you shouldn't trust. So the fire is going to be hot, ladies and gentlemen. But before I get into that, we're going to take a real quick commercial break. And we will be right back after these messages right here on the Tariq Elite Mac Lessons Radio Show. Holla. CaseUltra.com just released this month's T-shirt package called Government Wolves. Now, this T-shirt is inspired by the document called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, which explains plans for mass public and mind control. Sign up before the 15th and make sure you get that shirt. And with Case Ultra's T-shirt subscription, you get a new T-shirt delivered every month. You never have to worry about buying another T-shirt again. Go to CaseUltra.com. Use your coupon code KFLEX and get 50% off on everything on the site for your first month. That's CaseUltra.com. TheHoneyHouse.com. That's the new social networking site where you can meet new friends and you can socialize online. This is your chance to get your chat game up and females who log in daily will get access to cash prizes and whoever imports the most contacts will get free giveaways, ladies and gentlemen. So do not wait. Log in today. You have nothing to lose. Remember, this is a free site. That's TheHoneyHouse.com. D-A-HoneyHouse.com. Ladies and gentlemen, join me, Tariq Elite Nasheed, live on September 21st, 2013. That's a Saturday at Tennessee State University Gentry Center. That is in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to be doing a live lecture there. It's my first time in Nashville. I'm going to be spitting that hot fire. I want to see you in the place if you are surrounding Nashville, Memphis, Alabama, Mississippi, Atlanta, wherever you're from, come on down to Nashville, Tennessee. The game is going to be hot. The hot fire is going to be hotter. Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or you get your tickets at TariqLive.com. Again, that's me, Tariq Elite Nasheed, live in Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, September 21st at the Tennessee State Gentry Center in Nashville, Tennessee. I will see you there. You know, bad credit is very, very unplayer. You need a viable credit score for a car, for homes, for business loans, the whole nine yards. Primary Credit Boost makes it easy and it shows you how to save thousands of dollars by doing it for yourself. And you can make a profit while providing services for others. Get a copy of the new e-course delivered to your home and learn how to delete negative issues, raise credit scores, and get trade lines in as little as 14 to 30 days. Go to PrimaryCreditBoost.com and get your score up. Check out the brand new instructional DVD called The Bad Boy's Guide to Dating by Mr. Lacario. This instructional DVD course teaches you everything you need to know about attracting quality women and how to step your game up. You can get this at MrLacario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. Or you can get it at ILookSexyNaked.com. That's The Bad Boy's Guide to Dating DVD by Mr. Lacario. You are now tuning in to the king of games, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I am back. This is Tariq Elite, and we're ready to chop up some good game on today's show, ladies and gentlemen. 
And we're going to take some calls, by the way. The phone number is 818-850-5404. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the number to call in. Call in with whatever's on your mind. Before I get into the game, a few things to talk about in the media lately. Um, George Zimmerman's ass almost got arrested. They detained him, for those who don't know. His estranged wife called the police and said that Zimmerman came over to her dad's house and socked the dad in the face and threatened them with a gun. And I had to go to eBay and purchase the world's smallest violin and play that motherfucker because I gave two fucks about her. With this whole Zimmerman thing, people are like saying, well, I told you so, I told you so. And this is what you get. You let this maniac loose, knowing that he has some kind of problem, but people let their racism blind their judgment, and now you have a damn psychotic maniac out here with a gun on the loose. I'm pretty sure Zimmerman is going to end up killing somebody else. This is going to be one of those cases like Johan Vandersloot. Remember the guy who um, killed Nas- What's her name? Natalie Holloway down in Aruba? All the evidence was pointing to this guy murdering this, this girl down in Aruba. He even admitted it. They had him on tape admitting it. And they just let this guy go until he basically killed somebody else. People like that, they have a problem. And they're not going to stop until you stop them. And that's the thing with Zimmerman. You've just empowered a fucking maniac. This guy is not going to stop until he kills somebody else. And that's karma. That's the, as Dick Gregory says, that's the universal God coming back and extracting vengeance. But I digress as far as that. As far as Dick Gregory, I just mentioned Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory is going to be in Hidden Colors 3, by the way. We're working on Hidden Colors 3 right now. We have the Kickstarter page up for Hidden Colors 3 right now, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So go to kickstarter.com, type in Hidden Colors 3, The Rules of Racism. That's the title of the new documentary. And you guys can donate and be involved and participate with the making of Hidden Colors 3. We're, I think we're at like 15,000 in like a, a day, basically. Today is the second day. We launched it yesterday. We're already at 15,000. So we're, we're, we want to get a million of them things. So we need everybody to get involved because Hidden Colors 3 is going to be hot. We already got Francis Cress Welsing. We got Paul Mooney. We interviewed him for it. We interviewed Dick Gregory. I got pictures of all of them on my Facebook and my Twitter and my Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed. Instagram at Tariq Elite. And we got a, a lot of more, a lot more surprises for people who's going to be in it. I'm telling you, this one is going to be hot. And if you have not seen the trailer, you can see it on YouTube. Just type in Hidden Colors 3, The Rules of Racism. Or you can just go to the Kickstarter page, but definitely be involved. Because this is going to be history, ladies and gentlemen, and this is going to be hot. But I digress. Did y'all hear about Mr. C, the DJ from, um, I think it's what, Hot 97 New York? This dude got caught yet again fucking with a trainee. This time the trainee was taping him and it is, hold on, let me, let me play some for Mr. C. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, this dude keeps getting caught out there. Why don't this dude just come on out and just say, hey, you know, um, this is what I am. Hold on, hold on. Let me play this. This for Mr. C. Hold on. You need to give it up. How about enough? Yeah, he just need to come on out the it's closet, man. To see the, boy is mine. the boys I'm are his. I mean, this nigga loves boys. The boys are his. Just come on out the closet, Mr. C. This is embarrassing. This is just utterly embarrassing seeing this man every other goddamn week getting caught out there on the track with a transsexual, a gay dude, hermaphrodite. He's just doing any and every goddamn thing. Mr. C, come on out that closet, man. We'll accept you for what you are, bruh. But this is ridiculous, man. But I digress, man. Shout out to Hot 97. Shout out to Mr. C. Mike, just come on out the goddamn closet, man. This is just sad. This is just sad. Let's see who's on the phone right now. What's going on? Who's calling? Tommy. What's your name, bro? Tommy. Tommy? Yeah. All right, where you calling from, Tommy? Fort Worth. Fort Worth. What's on your mind, Tommy? Yeah, I just got a question, man. Um... 
I was wondering, um, how do I go about trying to hook up with a supervisor on my job? How do you go about trying to hook up with a supervisor on your job? Now, how important is it to keep your job? Very important. Well, that's the thing, man. You don't... Do you really want to jeopardize that? Because let's say you holler at your supervisor and it works and everything pops off and things go bad. Do you think she's going to let you keep working there? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Now, let's just say you try to holler at her and she ain't cooperating. Now, do you think yeah. the energy? Yeah. Do you think the energy is going to be fly? at that job so that's what that's why i asked you how important is the job because right now i know there's a lot of sexual tension going on and when cats feel that sexual tension you want to spit at your people your co-workers and all that but uh if you really need that job i would say don't even fuck with it now if you got a uh, uh, uh-huh. now if this is the kind of job where, where do you work at let me say that where do you work i work at a hospital okay what, what do you do are you you, you could be a janitor or you can work in the cafeteria i mean what do you do at the hospital Oh, I'm a patient care uh, associate, you know, I'm okay. like a medical assistant type. Okay, yeah, so this is real, this is some real, a real job here. You need that paper, you know, this, this is something you, you got to train for. So I wouldn't rock with that because you need your job, you dig? So, uh, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's sexual tension there. Just, you know, just charge that to the game, but don't let that get you fucked up in the game, man. Just go ahead and do your work and get at some females outside of your workplace, you feel me? All right, man. All right, man. Thanks. Y'all got to be very careful about that, man. I know that sexual tension builds up. Now, if you don't give a shit about the job, fuck everybody up there. Just get a, get with all the women. But if you need that paper, don't don't risk it right now. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, what up? What up? Flex, M. Dot in Atlanta. What's up, man? M. Dot, how you doing, player? Man, hanging in there. What's the word? Man, just um, keeping it P.I. till I D.I. Keeping it macking, stacking. What's going on with you, player? Man, not too much, man. Let me ask you a question for the for the fall, man. What what advice did you give to the players this season for the fall? Like how to switch their game up, you know, as far as like you know getting one consistent female on the team rather than having a bunch of random women. Well, what you got to do, man, brothers going to have to start doing some import game. That means you're going to have to start bringing them in from different cities if there's a, a dry pool where you live. Because a lot of times, a lot of these cities, there's a drought as far as real thorough women. So there's nothing wrong with in importing a couple of dimes, importing a couple of bad ones, and, and just going to different cities and campaigning. Right now, we got to use the whole country as your platform to campaign. Because, again, some of these cities are real dry. You go to cities where just all the women are whack, and then you go to cities where all the dudes are whack. So it, it goes both ways. So cats has got to get out there and hit the road, man, if, it, if it's not popping in your city, especially in Atlanta. Now, there's a lot of good cooperation in Atlanta, but the thing is you got to shift through all the goddamn bullshit down there to get to the thorough ones. But um, you, you just got to campaign a little harder. You feel me? Exactly. Thanks. I'm going to donate for Hancock's 3, too. Yes, sir. Much respect, brother. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, and back to the guy who called earlier about hollering at the women at his job. And that, another thing you got to be careful about being a brother at work and trying to put your bid in with certain females. See, that can go all types of different ways because certain women can use that to run to H&R, to Human Resources, to say that you harass them and they can try to get some money about the company. You know what I'm saying? Because w- when brothers do stuff or, or if a brother's accused of something, people are more likely to believe it no matter how far-fetched the accusation is or how false the accusation is. So certain people will use racial bias against black males to their advantage. Like you go holler at a female and she's like, nah, I'm cool. And then months later, if she's getting discipline at the job or they're about to fire her she can come back and say well hell that nigga down in the mail room harass me and I want a hundred thousand dollars from the company you know what I'm saying then they fire you on some pawn in the game shit you, you dig so you gotta be very careful as far as that especially if you're a brother let's see who's on the phone ladies and gentlemen what's up who's calling Yo. what's up player who's how's calling it, how's it going it's Don Wesley Don Wesley, where you calling from, player? I'm calling from Northridge, California right now. There you go. Would you go to CSUN? Yeah, I go to CSUN. I'm also an entrepreneur myself, so I'm just up here uh, establishing my businesses. 
There you go. You got businesses in the valley? What, what you, where are your businesses? Um, I got a college company called collegemediatv.com. We just do a lot of networking with college students. Um, from fitness to entertainment, if they want to learn how to be a poet, we help them out, help them market out as well, too. There you go. There you go. Shout out to CSUN. <laughs> I knew a lot of dimes that went to CSUN, but shout out to CSUN. So what's on your mind, player? Oh, well, I, I got your tweet. Um, I, I follow you. I'm a fan. Yes. Uh, so I saw it was like the Mac lesson. So I'm guessing uh, we were just going to call in and you know, ask some questions and get, get our answers, our perspectives on, some, on certain topics. Yeah, I man, just call. What you, if you have a question? Let, let me know your question. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I'll play like this then. Okay. You ain't me, got I'm you. a young man. I'm okay. a young student. I'm okay. a young businessman, successful. How do you? I would say. How do you find a find a girl that's not really trying to be the ones that's trying to be snakeish? You know what I mean by snakeish? Yeah. So you're trying to find a girl who's not trying to be snakeish. Who's not trying to be snakeish? I mean, I don't necessarily need a girl that's on my level, but how do I find the ones that's not trying to be like? Because people could fake a girl could damn near fake her whole personality until it's that time where you're tight or not. So, how do you distinguish the ones who actually gonna be there for you? What test should a, a Mac put them through to actually know if they're gonna be there? Because well, I know you're supposed to leave a dog starving before you could actually feed them. It would be loyal. Okay, what, what I want you to do is um, when the show is over, listen to the rest of this show because the name of the show is The Women, Seven Types of Women You Don't Trust. So you'll get a lot of good game from that. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for the call, player. So, yeah, the, the show is basically about that. And let's get into the topic of the show. The show is called today, Seven Women That You Do Not Trust. Now, this ain't dissing anybody, but these are cer- certain observations about certain women that guys need to watch out for. So I'm going to need all the players to grab your pencils, grab your paper, grab your pads, and let's jot some of these notes down about certain women that you do not trust. Now, number one, let's get to number one. Now, the first type of woman you don't trust, you never trust the woman who refers to you as a gentleman. See, a lot of guys think it's a compliment when a woman calls you a gentleman, but that is not a compliment whatsoever. When a woman calls you a gentleman, that's the same thing as calling you a trick, sucker, or a mark. That's a red flag, fellas. If a woman ever refers to you as a gentleman, your antenna should go all the way up. You out with a woman, everything is cool, and the woman says, oh, man, you are such a gentleman. Now, you blushing thinking that you're getting a compliment. Women only say that to niggas that they're not fucking. Women never say you're a gentleman to a dude that they're fucking. Never. Think about it, fellas. Think of all the women that you laid the pipe to. How many of them refer to you as a gentleman after you laid that pipe? Women say that to dudes that they're trying to run some game on. That's them using reverse psychology on dudes. Oh, you're such a gentleman. You're such a generous guy. They say little shit like that to reverse psychology game on your ass. They say that to get you to trick off your paper. They say that to get you to do things. They get, they say that to you, letting you know that they ain't trying to fuck. Saying that you're too much of a gentleman to want this pussy. You're a gentleman. So gentlemen's don't want to fuck women that they just met they like to buy them things that's what gentlemen do that's that little reverse psychology game women run on dudes and some certain dudes go for it so don't let women call you gentlemen or if a woman is calling you a gentleman that means you're doing something wrong if a woman is calling you a gentleman that means you gotta step your game up a little bit don't take that shit as a compliment that means you need to step your game up so you can handle that business Because when she's calling you a gentleman, that means she's going to expect you to buy something or take her out and wine and dine and cupcake and roll out the red carpet. And that's what you don't want to do when you meet somebody, because a lot of times, if that's what people require of you, they're not really that into you. Then now there's nothing wrong with going out, having a good time and, you know, spending money and all that. But it has to be reciprocal. It has to be certain. There has to be a certain chemistry there where you know the woman is feeling you and all of the whining and dining, that's just incidental. If it's a requirement, that's a negative thing. The woman ain't feeling you. And when women call dudes gentlemen, that's not a good look. 
Now, let's get to the second type of woman you don't trust. Speaking of going out, the second woman you don't trust when you are going out, fellas, that's the attention stank. That's the female who's at the club dressed real stank, real slutty, doing real freaky shit. Now, a lot of guys love to gravitate towards women like that, but you do not trust these women. These women are very deceptive because what they do, they like to dangle the carrot in your face, but they never let you get the carrot. When you go out, and I've said this in many of my broadcasts, I even said this in my first book, The Art of Mackin, which every one of you guys should have. Every guy should have The Art of Mackin. Go to Amazon.com right now and get The Art of Mackin and get The Elite Way, by the way. But when you're at the club and you see the female dress real stank with the see-through um, cat suit, booty cheeks out, popping that ass with a gang of tattoos on her belly and all that old whole shit, you think, oh, wow, that's easy ass. Let me gravitate towards her. Let me focus all my energy here on her because I know she's fucking. And they will tease you all night, flirt with you, smile with you, rub their butt cheeks all up on your groin. And at the end of the day, you going home with dry balls because she's like, oops, I got to go. I got to go to work in the morning. Um, deuces. Women like that never drop them draws. It's very, very rare when you see the attention stinks dropping draws at the end of the night. They do all that shit for attention and then they go right back home with ego gratification. The females you want to go for, the ones who are down to do the do that night, and I've said this a million times in my book, The Art of Mackin, it's the conservative looking female, the female who's looking very humble, subtle, subdued, the real low-key looking female who's by herself or at least with one other person but not with a whole bunch of people, the one who's just kind of chilling by the bar, sitting in the cut, that's the goddamn freak. That's the one you need to be hollering at if you're trying to get it in that night. Not the attention scan. It's that quiet, cool, conservative, laid back female who's down for whatever. That's the cool one. She's about that life, which I like. No deception. It's all cool in the game. She tells you what she what she wants. See, the thing is, y'all don't even bother with those women. They're the ones who are down. I've had women, I've talked to those conservative looking low key women. Real fine though. I'm, I'm, when I say conservative, I don't mean homely. Don't equate conservative with being homely. I'm talking about women who are just dressed in a nice outfit, nothing over the top. Just no, no crazy weave, no crazy makeup, no tongue rings, none of that shit. Just a real cool fly chick just sitting, chilling. You have a conversation with them and you'll be surprised. They'll be like, hey, so um, what are you doing later? How about we get up out of here? They'll, they'll come at you. But niggas don't know how to holler at them because you got to really come out the mouthpiece with it. You got to talk like you got some goddamn sense. And that's all you got to really do. You ain't got to floss and toss out drinks and pop bottles and all that old nigga shit. Talk like you got some sense to one of those real cool fly females sitting in the cut. And you'll see all types of cooperation you'll get. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to number three. The third type of female that you do not trust, brothers... You don't trust the female who dated a cute dog in college. Now, sometimes, fella, you, you might be in a relationship with a female and you find out she dated a cute dog in college. You don't want to know what them cute dogs did to her ass. Them cute dogs probably ran all types of trains on her ass. That woman probably has so many skeletons in her closet. That woman probably still has little medical problems where them niggas then fuck one of her kidneys loose. And if you're a dude in college and you got a girlfriend and she says, hey, babe, I'm going to this cute dog party, break the fucking relationship off, nigga. That's her way of telling you it's over. Them cues are known to run through bras. And these women know that. And if they go, that means they want to be ran through. So understand that, fellas. Now, let's get to number four. The fourth type of woman that you do not trust. Never trust a white woman who's been jumped on by at least two dudes. Let me repeat that, fellas. You never trust a white woman that has been domestically abused 
by at least two dudes. Because I've met white women before, and these white women will complain that every dude they dated jumped on them or beat them up or some shit like that. Now, I'm not excusing anybody for beating somebody up. That's not cool. But the thing is, if the woman is the common denominator, especially if she's a white woman, because white women are generally easy going now sisters i you know, sisters get jumped on or beat up because sisters be instigating fights all the time sisters say real slick shit to people and you know shit happens which is not justified but i'm just saying but when white women get jumped on by multiple dudes she's doing some shit she ain't supposed to do and every time i see white women who done been jumped on by three or four different dudes and i'm talking about even white dudes jump on their ass if you see a white woman and a white man and whooped her ass, a few white men and beat their ass, you know she ain't to be trusted. She's doing some shit she ain't supposed to do. Every time I meet a white woman or a chop up game with a white woman, she's been jumped on a few times by dudes. Usually she's scandalous as hell and she is not to be trusted. She's doing something to instigate that. Now, number five, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth type of woman that you don't trust that's a woman who does not have a social networking site fellas you ever meet women you chopping up gang with them and you're like hey what's your what's your twitter oh i don't i don't be fucking with that twitter no you say hey well, um it's nice to meet you let me get your facebook page oh no no i don't know i don't do facebook you ever meet women like that women don't have no facebook they don't have no instagram they don't have no twitter Women like that are scandalous as hell. They try to make it seem like they're above the social networking technology. Oh, oh, I got better things to do than be on Instagram and Twitter. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. Everybody on the planet should be uh, computer literate or have some kind of social networking site just to kind of chit chat and, and correspond with people. That's just the new way to correspond with people. And if a female has no social networking sites she's either running from law enforcement or she's running from some motherfuckers in the streets she's trying to hide she done done something scandalous to somebody in the streets usually she done probably stole a nigga's dope she done snitched on somebody so she's laying low and her ass is not to be trusted if she don't have no social networking sites just think about it think about the women you know who don't have no social networking sites I guarantee you they done done something scandalous or they have a scandalous disposition. So never trust that. Now, number six. The sixth type of female fellas that you do not trust. That's a female with a family full of felons. A female with a family full of felons. Now, she might not be a felon. She might be Miss Goody Two-Shoes, but she's the kind of female who has a whole bunch of family members who are felons. You know, the cousin and uncle and dad and brother in and out of jail. The mama's been in and out of jail. She has a whole scandalous family. But she's the Miss Goody Two-Shoes. Now, even if she is Miss Goody Two-Shoes, you got to watch it. Watch out for her and the kind of information she's giving about you if you choose to date her. Because the thing is, a lot of people, their family can do no wrong no matter how dirt baggage they are. In certain people's minds, their family can do no wrong. So she might have a felony ass brother who's fishing for information about you. So he's talking to the girl you're dating. Like, hey, what's up with old dude you dating? Oh yeah, I'm dating um I'm dating Tariq. He's a real nice guy. Oh yeah. What part of town he live? Yeah, he lives up in the, um, the hills. Or what street he live on? This nigga's fishing for information and she's giving out information <laughs> to some little dusty ass relative who's plotting and she don't understand that this nigga's plotting. And she's inadvertently giving out your information to her dusty ass family and that can come back and bite you on the ass later on. Yeah, what kind of car your new nigga drive? Oh, he, he drives a, a, a 13, 2013 Audi. Oh yeah. What side is the um, ignition switch on? I don't know. Oh, I'm just asking, you know, um, could you take it out with a screwdriver? I mean, niggas just asking a lot of shit, <laughs> fishing for information about you through the girl. And she could possibly be naive to not put two and two together, not knowing that her scandalous ass family is trying to plot. And even if she's not scandalous, 
who knows that later on down the line if one of them relatives get in her ear and tells her to do something scandalous. You dig? So you don't want to be around that energy, period. You don't want to be around these females with these felony goddamn family members. That's not a good look. Now, ladies and gentlemen, number seven, last but not least, the seventh thing, fellas, that you should not trust, the seventh type of female that you should not trust, never trust a black woman with no ass. Let me say that again. You never trust a black woman with no ass. Now, what do you mean by that, Tariq? See, black women with no ass, from my experiences, a lot of them, they're they're scandalous. I've dated a lot of females in my life and time, and I've noticed the ones with the no ass at all symptoms, no ass at all, they've been a little more scandalous than the other ones. I always look for common denominators in women, and women with them little narrow asses turn out to be scandalous as hell. Because the thing is, see, being a black female with no ass, you know, that's like a cruel trick of Mother Nature. Because as a black female, that's, you know, a lot of times that's your bargaining chip, that ass. Especially if you're in the hood. That's another thing. If you're a hood chick with no ass, that's a cruel trick because that is your bargaining chip. And the thing is... If you're a black chick with no ass, you got very few options. You got the option to date a white dude or date white dudes. And in that case, if you're dating white dudes, a lot of times for black males, brothers got to be extra cautious with you because we can't really trust you as far as that. Because I've talked about many times when you have black women who date white guys, their mentality towards other black people, especially black men, is even more scandalous. That's that Negro bedwinch mentality. They have a lot of disdain for brothers at that point. So if you're a black woman with a flat ass, you have the option to date white dudes, which we can't really trust you as far as that. As a matter of fact, there was a young lady who sent me an email the other day. She was talking about interracial marriages. She was saying that the percentage of black women who marry white men those marriages last about 51% longer. She said something to, I think that's the stat she gave. I think it was 51%. It was 51%, 60, I'm not sure of the exact number, but the stats show that black women who were married to white men, statistically, the relationships lasted longer. And she wondered why, why that was. And the reason why that is is because when black women date or marry white men, black women have 110% more cooperation and they're on their P's and Q's 110% more of the time. Black women are on their P's and Q's when they date a white dude. They don't break bad and talk all that slick shit when they date a white dude. So you give a 110% more cooperation because you know that white dudes don't fuck around and play that. They don't play games like that. You have to be, as a black woman, on your P's and Q's. The minute you step out of line, they drop that ass and you become all types of nigga bitches, just like Holly Berry. So you know instinctively you got to be on your P's and Q's and you got to always put your best foot forward when you date white as a black female. It's a little different from brothers. Brothers can just kind of be themselves, but dating a white male, they require you to be a certain way, to be socially accepted among their peers. Real deep stuff. But the thing is, man, black women having no ass is devastating. You know, a lot of them, you you go through things, especially if you're from the hood. You you didn't have no ass. A lot of you probably didn't go to the prom. A lot of shit you didn't get growing up with no ass. You sat your flat ass home and didn't do shit during the prom. So a lot of women, when you have no ass sisters, you have to overcompensate because having ass in the black community is a very powerful thing. Having ass in the black community is some real shit. It's very powerful. Because all the nice ass sisters, sisters with a nice ass, you get certain things. Even minimum items. You can get like food and nails and hair done shit. You can get the basic necessities met if you have a nice ass. 
Especially if you're a hood chick. A hood chick with no ass, I mean, you gotta be scandalous to get yours. You gotta go that extra mile to get yours. You gotta do extra things in order to make a mark. And even sexually, a lot of women with no ass, sisters with no ass, you gotta be extra freaky. You gotta be a tad bit more freakier if you ain't got no ass as a sister. You dig what I'm saying? In order to get yours, you gotta be you got to plot and you got to scheme a little bit more. You got to be you know, about that other shit in order to get your paper, in order to get it in if you're a sister with no ass. And I'm not saying, again, like I said, all sisters, if, if there's some sisters out there you ain't got no ass, that don't mean all of you are scandalous. I'm not saying that. All the narrow ass sisters, I'm not saying you're all, you're scandalous whatsoever. I'm just saying I wouldn't leave my wallet around your ass unattended. Because I never know. You never know what you motherfuckers are capable of when you ain't got no ass. You know that Bell Biv DeVoe song? It said, never trust a big butt and a smile. No bullshit. You never trust a flat ass and a frown. That's what you don't trust. There's a reason why hydrogel asses are so popular in the black community. Because these women know having ass is very important. At least you can get the basic necessity, especially right now, since financial times are kind of hard, in the hood especially, you need whatever bargaining chips you can get. The hydrogel companies and the the bootleg hydrogelers are making a grip right now, because these women know having no ass is just not the business, especially on a basic necessities level. That's why I don't trust women with no ass, sisters with no ass. I do not trust sisters with no ass. If you ain't got no ass, you better do some squats or get some muscle in that ass or something. So you don't be trying to plot and scheme and do scandalous shit. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, go to TariqElite.com, ladies and gentlemen, to get the t-shirts, to get all the gear. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Go to Kickstarter right now, ladies and gentlemen, and donate to the film, Hidden Colors 3. We're working on it now, ladies and gentlemen. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Twitter, Tariq Nasheed. Instagram at Tariq Elite. I'm going to holler at you guys Sunday on Ustream. Peace. Stream, peace. Stream, peace. Stream, peace. Stream, peace.